Oh. Welcome everyone, this is Curtin's channel. Now we are back to our new episodes of two similar chapters and comparisons. Featured by Wild Lake of the Legends versus the Mobile Legend by Gang. But before that, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell button so you will be notified to our new next episode video. But let's do this! As a child, she joined the Thumb Snipe Gang and quickly learned how to survive. And as she grew, so did her reputation. She became known as the one who could punch or talk her way out of trouble, although it was mostly the punching. None of the friends who took care of Vi knew anything about her parents. Most of them assumed they had died in one of the industrial accidents, which unfortunately were common in Zon. Few of her friends remember her as one of the bards from Hope House, a crumbling orphanage cut into Zon's cliff. Then there was the notoriously mad Thumbscraper. While dying, he swore he found Vi in a cradle large enough for two in the ruins of a chem laboratory. In the end, Vi gave up on trying to learn about her parents. She figured some things were better left unknown. Later on, even wilder stories surrounded her as she earned a strong reputation among the Undercity's gangs. With her wild pink hair, it was very easy to spot Vi in the streets of Zon. And it didn't help when she was running from the angry shopkeepers or hitching rides into Piltover on the hex hydraulic conveyors. Whenever there was a possible scam, the chances were Vi was part of it. But despite her reputation as a troublemaker, she followed her own code. She never stole from those who couldn't afford to lose, and never hurt those that didn't deserve it. As she got older, she proved her authority as a leader of her own gang. She was brash, quick to anger, and she still liked to use her fists little too much. And even though she was usually the last man standing, her eyes were often black and her lips split from fighting. Over the years, Vi formed a friendship with the owner of a bar on the edge of the lane, a colorful street full of markets. He was able to temper some of her more self-destructive tendencies. He taught her how to fight with discipline and how to better direct her anger. But despite his influence on Vi, her gang ran riot across Zon. Vi became known as a person who got things done, no questions asked. Soon her sense of morality began to trouble her more frequently as she saw the damage she and the other gangs were leaving in their wake. The final straw came when she worked together with another gang on a heist at a Camtech facility. They spent some time listening in on the miners in the bar, and they found out when the payment for the ore was being delivered. It was an easy job, but it required more bodies, so they brought in the factory wood fiends. Everything went according to the plan, until the leader of the fiends used a gem-powered mining golem to kill the owner of the mine with its oversized gauntlet. The rest of the fiends drove the workers back into the mines, and the leader demolished the opening, driving the golem into overload. This unnecessary slaughter and destruction infuriated Vi. It would have been a perfect score, but now, these psychotic idiots were ruining it. Grabbing their share of the gold, the fiends made their escape. But the miners were now trapped below the ground with limited supply of air. Vi couldn't leave them to die, and she swiftly donned the overloading golem's powered gauntlet before it tore itself apart. The wrist mechanisms clamped down on her arm, but Vi endured the pain long enough to smash through the rocks and free the miners. Right after that, her gang grabbed the rest of the gold and they fled as well. The following day, Vi paid a visit to the factory wood fiend. Using the same powered gauntlet, she administered a beating to the entire gang that is still spoken of by the other gangs of Zon to this day. After that, Vi swore never to work with anyone she didn't fully trust. 
She kept the pulverizer gauntlets and had them modified so as not to burn her whenever she used them to break into vaults and armored convoys. Time passed and when the tensions between Piltover and Zone were at an all-time high, Vi simply disappeared from Zone. Rumors say that she traveled out into distant lands, but the truth was finally revealed when the old hungry scars, a gang whose murder sprees had spread into Piltover, were finally brought down by the sheriff of Piltover and her new ally, Vi. The former gang leader of Zone was now working for the warden, and she had an upgrade. Her camp-powered gauntlets were replaced with prototype Hextech gauntlets. She also seemed somehow older, as if she'd seen and done things that changed her forever. The vibe from the streets, settling everything with her fists, was still there, but it seemed like she realized her path had only one ending. No one yet knows how Vi came to be working with Caitlyn, but given the personal nature of a recent crime wave sweeping Piltover, speculation spread that it involves a certain blue-haired hellion from Zone. The following story comes directly after Caitlyn's story. It was a slow morning for Vi. She was summoned into the Hall of Law in the heart of Piltover. Few drunks were sleeping it off in their shaming cells, and Vi heard they even had a couple of augmented thugs in the more secure cells. She would definitely ask around later to see if she could provide any insight as to what they were doing in Piltover. She had a long night shift behind her, so her forearms were still aching from the pressure of her powered gauntlet. All she wanted to do was to go back home, get them off, and bathe her fists in ice water. Maybe throw back few glasses of something strong and sleep some. But Caitlyn's message was clear. She had to get to the district house as soon as possible. So Vi relaxed for about an hour before leaving her home. Hey, Hartner. She said to the desk warden when she reached the cell. What's so important Caitlyn had to drag me from an erotic dream about... Ah, stop right there said Harkner without looking up from his elevated desk as he ran a finger down a list of prisoners they brought in during the night. I'm not in the mood to hear another of your lurid fantasies. You sure? Grinned Vi, leaning on his desk and blowing a loose strand of pink hair from her eyes. This was a good one. Had a plot and everything. Quite sure, said Harkner, looking away and holding the chart sheet. Caitlin and Mohan brought in a Hextech P plasma. He hasn't said a word to anyone, but she thinks he might be able to get him to talk. Vi scanned the page. The Bucky? You've been a very naughty boy. She said, rolling her eyes and curling her meddled fingers into a fist. Yeah, the Bucky and I knew each other back in the day. I'll get him to talk. Harkner shook his head. Listen Vi, I don't want to have to call the surgeon back here again. Caitlyn wants this fella to be able to speak when he goes before the procurator. Where is she anyway? Asked Vi. She isn't even here to say hello. Chasing down a lead at the dock, said Hartner. Said she figured you could handle this one on your own. She wrong about that? Nope, said Vi, turning and walking toward the cell. Which cell the Vaki in? Number six. But remember, he's got to be able to talk. Vi nodded. Yeah, yeah. She reached cell 6 and slid back the locking bar. Normally, another warden would have to secure the door, but Vi didn't need anyone at her back. She knew the Vaki from the old days, even worked with him a few times before the job with the factory boot fiends. The Vaki was a thief, not a fighter. He was sitting on the edge of the stone bench they called back. His back to the wall and his knees drawn up to his chest. He held one of his arms close to his body. Bandages secured to the stump where his hands used to be. He looked up as she entered. His eyes widened in surprise. Bye? Built over spine. She said in a tone that, despite the situation, made the Vaki smile. What happened to your hand? Your damn sheriff shut it off, he said. What happened to yours? I got an upgrade said Vi holding up her Hextech gauntlet, fully customizable with variant levels of her. I can punch through walls with these babies. 
Yeah, I heard what happened to the ecliptic vaults. Said the Vaki with an easy smile. As if he was talking to the old Vi. The Vi from the lanes. He wasn't bright enough to know that Vi wasn't the one standing in front of him. The Vaki held up the arm ending in his thumb. I'm gonna need an upgrade too. This was a high-end augment from Bronzeo. That sheriff didn't need to shoot it off. You can bill her. Said Vi, closing the distance between them in two steps and lifting the Vaki off his feet. She threw him against the opposite wall, rattling his bones and sending dust blowing into the air. The Vaki slid to the floor, shocked and gasping for breath. They've been playing nice so far, but now they sent you in? What gives? I'm the one they send in when asking all polite doesn't get you anywhere, Cupcake. Said Vi, letting the power build in her gauntlet. I'm the one who'll go to town on you with these beauties. Unless, of course, you tell me what I want to know. Whoa, wait! Vi, what are you doing? Spluttered the Vaki, holding his remaining hand out before him as he scrambled to his feet. I'm interrogating you. What does it look like? But you haven't asked me anything! Vi cocked her head to the side. Yeah, I should probably get on that. She reached down and hauled the Vaki to his feet, applying a growing pressure to his shoulder. So, who was gonna buy that stolen hex tech? The Vaki winced in pain, but he didn't answer. Come on, you're tougher than that, said Vi, releasing his bruised shoulder. You want to see what happens to a face when I don't pull my punches? No, cried the Vaki. Then tell me what I want to know. I can't. Vi tapped a finger on her chin, as if deciding whether to punch him again. She smiled, the expression boring the Vaki way more than the thought of her fist. Be a shame if a word got around the lanes that you've been informing on all your criminal friends for the last couple of years. What? That's a lie! Of course it is, said Vi. But I know all the right people to talk to down there. A lot of folks will listen if I let it slip that you're in the warden's pocket. I'll be dead in a day if you do that, protested the Vaki. Now you're catching on. Tell me what I want to know. I'll make sure it gets about you resisted the arrest. Even give you a black eye so it looks like I beat it out of it. The Vaki's shoulders slumped, knowing he had no defiance left in him. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know. Excellent, said Vi. Now we're getting somewhere. And with this cliffhanger ends my story. So again, thank you so much for being here. And as always, thank you come again. <laughs>